good morning students welcome to the lecture of operation research in the last lecture we have started understanding a new method of solving quadratic programming problem called as a wolf's method the wolf method is totally depending on the kuntakar conditions this is what a general quadratic programming problem and wolf iterative processor tells us that we have to first convert the inequality constraint including non negativity restriction two equations by using the slack variables qi square and rj square once we convert this then we have to construct a lagrangian function while constructing a lagrangian function we will use the lagrange's multiplier lambda uh, to the original constraints and mu the lambda multiplier lagrange's multiplier to the non negativity restrictions and then we will go for obtaining the kuntakar conditions as we have seen already kuntakar conditions are obtained by differentiating the lagrangian function l partially with respect to the all components and equating the first order partial derivatives to zero then uh, in 1959 the mathematician wolf has suggested to introduce the artificial variable vj in the kuntakar condition because this kuntakar conditions which we have derived is actually the a uh, combination of linear and non linear equations uh, some of the equations are linear and the remaining equations are non linear those equations which are non linear in the variables are called as complementary slackness condition so for the problem actually remains to derive the solution of linear equations which is which is going to satisfy the complementary slackness conditions or which sub, uh, satisfies the non linear conditions as well then the mathematician wolf has suggested to add the artificial variables vj to the linear equation this is the linear equation in which we were adding the artificial variable the need of the artificial variable is actually uh, with whichever the linear equations we have in order to solve this by usual uh, simplex method we should construct a initial basic feasible solution for that we need an identity matrix in the simplex table but here if we observe this equation there are in all n equations of this type in which there is no slack variable therefore it is somewhat difficult for us to construct the identity matrix therefore we were taking the help of an artificial variable once we add n artificial variable to these n equations then we are going to construct an objective function that is sum of artificial variable therefore new lpp is being constructed by minimizing the sum of artificial variable which is equivalent to maximizing minus v1 minus v2 to minus v and which are subject to the constant now here whatever this qi square we were using is a slack variable if i replace this qi square by si this will give us the uh, columns of an identity matrix model therefore now we have two conditions actually there are m plus n condition these are n in number these are m in number so for there are in all m plus n linear equations which also satisfies this non linear equations called as complementary slackness conditions then apply two phase simplex method no need to proceed uh, to phase 2 the solution obtained in phase 1 will be the final solution because as such there is no other objective function with us therefore whatever is the solution in phase 1 will be the solution of our linear programming problem and which in turn will be a solution of our quadratic programming problem this is what uh, idea i have explained quadratic programming problem if i want to solve first construct lagrangian then kuntakar condition then wolf method right and then we have seen one example uh, example was very easy actually right and this example in this example we have constructed kuntakar conditions then while evaluating this initial basic feasible solution in the initial table we have just uh, used this complementary slackness conditions i hope there is no difficulty in the example itself if you have the difficulty you can ask me no ma'am this lecture number 28 i think right yes ma'am now shall i take one more example of wolf method so the idea will be clear okay let me take one more example of wolf method problem is maximize the x is equal to 2x1 
plus 3x2 minus 2x1 square. But this is a very big example actually having 5, 6 tables. Subject to x1 plus 4x2 less than or equals to 4, x1 plus x2 less than or equals to 2, and x1, x2 greater or equal by 0. Again, two constraints subject to two non negativity construct uh, conditions or restrictions. Now, what the first job? Converting all the constraint inequalities to equations. Step one, we will write. Now, while converting this uh, constraint, we have to consider the non negativity restriction as well. Convert all constraint inequalities into equations. Which is lack variables to use? Yes. By introducing, is it Q1 square, Q2 square, R1 square, and R2 square? Right now, introducing as slack variables. Okay, therefore, let me rewrite the problem. The problem will be maximize zx is equal to 2x1 plus 3x2 minus 2x1 squared. Subject to the constraint. Okay, what is my first constraint? x1 plus 4x2 plus q1 squared. And actually, in the problem, we want equal to 0. Now, therefore, you can write minus 4 equal to 0 here itself. Second is x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 2. x1 plus x2 plus q1 square is equal to 2. What for the third one? Is it x1 less than x1 greater equal by 0? Now, therefore, if I convert it to less equal, this is minus x1 less than or equal to 0. Therefore, this is minus x1 plus r1 square equal to 0 minus x2 plus r2 square equal to 0. What is the next step? Yes, construction of Lagrangian function, right now. I think I am audible. Yes, ma'am. Let me construct a Lagrangian function. How many variable it takes? x1, x2 original variables, then slack variables used for the constraints q1, q2, slack variables for non-negativity restrictions r1, r2. How many Lagrange's multipliers we are going to use now? Lagrange's multiplier as lambda for Lagrange is multiplied lambda 1, lambda 2 for the original constants, mu 1, mu 2 for the non negativity restriction. Therefore, there are four Lagrange's multiplied lambda 1, lambda 2, mu 1, mu 2. So, what is the objective function? Original objective function is 2x1 plus 3x2 minus 2x1 square. Now we will multiply by lambda 1 to the first constraint and no doubt while multiplying we will write equal to 0 form. Means this is minus 4 equal to 0. For the first constraint is x1 plus 4x2. x1 plus 4x2 plus q1 square minus 4 minus lambda 2 into. Second is x1 plus x2 plus q2 square minus 2. Right now? It is better that if everyone write with me, will be a practice to you also. Okay, 
This is my Lagrangian function. How the Kunta current conditions is obtained now? Differentiating L with respect to the partial, differentiating L partial with respect to the variables. Now we will obtain Kunta current conditions. Now what we will do, differentiate L with respect to uh, all the variables partially. First let me differentiate L with respect to x1. Therefore what it is giving me, do L by do x1 equal to 0. Yes. This is 2 minus 4x1. Here it is, lambda 1 into 1. Right, no? Minus lambda 2 into 1 again minus mu1 into derivative of minus x1 is minus 1 and is equal to 0. Right? Let me just simplify the equation by multiplying with the negative sign. This is 4x1 plus lambda1 plus lambda2. This is minus of minus. It is plus mu1. If I multiply by negative, this is minus mu1 minus 2. I shift it to the right. Therefore, this is to this is the first equation. Second is do L by do x2 equal to 0. What is do L by do x2 will give us? Yes, first term it gives me 3 minus 4 lambda 1 minus lambda. Right now, 3 minus 4 lambda 1 minus lambda 2. And finally, this is plus mu 2 equal to 0. Therefore, again multiplying with negative, this gives us 4 lambda 1 plus lambda 2 minus mu 2 equals to 3. If I differentiate with respect to Q1, sorry, lambda 1, what it is giving us? It is giving us the first constant, correct? Not? Differentiating with respect to this lambda 1. This is my first constant, x1 plus 4x2. No doubt with a negative sign, plus Q1 square minus 4 is equal to 0. Let us absorb that negative sign. And we, what we will do simultaneously, let us keep the value of Q1 square at S1 and let us equate this to 4. So which is the substitution? Q1 square is equal to S1. We have substituted. Next, do L by do lambda 2 equal to 0. This is minus X1 plus X2 plus q2 square minus 2 is equal to 0. Absorbing the negative, it gives us x1 plus x2 plus s2 equal to 2. Again, I have substituted q2 square is equal to s2. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. We have differentiated with respect to the remaining variables. We have differentiated with respect to these many variables, right? If I differentiate with respect to q1, what will happen? To lambda 1 q1 equal to 0, that is lambda 1 q1 0. If I differentiate with respect to q2, this is lambda 2 q2 0. If I differentiate with respect to r1 and r2, this gives us mu1 r1 equal to 0, which in turn converts multiplying by r1 that in theory we have seen. mu1 r1 square equals to 0, that is that is mu1 x1 equal to 0. That therefore differentiating with respect to q1, q2 r1, r2 gives us complementary slackness conditions and differentiating with respect to mu1, mu2 generates the non-negativity value. Therefore, we are not going to write the remaining partial derivatives and just we will write subject to or and we will write and lambda1, s1, 0, lambda2, s2, 0, mu1, x1, 0, mu2, x2, 0. Right? u 2 x 2 0. Okay? This is what the method we were going to. And finally, and all the variables are non-negative. x1, x2, s1, s2, lambda1, lambda2, it means mu1, mu2. All are non-negative. Right? So these are the Kuntakar conditions. Now we will construct the Modified LPP. What is the step number? Four. Now to construct 
modified LPP. Now, what we were doing in this modified LPP, we were introducing the artificial variables to which equations? Let me write equation number one, 12 by x1, equation number two, 12 by x2, equation number three, and this b four. Now, we were introducing the artificial variable v1, v2 to equation number one and two and construct the objective function as minus v1 minus v2, right? Now, introducing artificial variables v1, v2 in 1, 2 respectively the modified LPP becomes hmm. what it is going to become maximize zero is equal to minus v1 minus v2 subject to which constants subject to the constants 1 2 3 4 right now but uh, don't forget to add v1 in this one v2 in this two and then three four taken as it is right so the equation is 4x1 plus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 minus mu 1 plus v1 equal to 2 second is 4 lambda 1 plus lambda 2 minus mu 2 plus v2 equals to 3 let us check for x1 plus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 minus mu 1 next second is 4 lambda 1 plus lambda 2 minus mu 2 what is for x1 plus 4x2 plus s1 plus s1 equal to 4 x1 plus x2 plus s2 is equal to 2 and all the variables are non-negative x1 x2 uh, lambda 1 lambda 2 mu 1 mu 2 mu 1 in fact, you will need a writing S1, S1 is to non negative. Right? Now let us construct the first table. Right? Number 5 to obtain initial simplex table. Now, what we were going through in initial simplex table, which are my Basic variable? Yes. V1, V2, S1, S2. Which are the basic variable from? Good. V1, V2, S1, S2 are the basic variables. And what is the cost of V1, V2? Minus 1, minus 1. Cost of remaining will be 0, 0. Let us construct a table. Table basic variable cb xb x1 x2 original lambda 1 lambda 2 lagrange's multiplier mu 1 mu 2 also lagrange's multiplier then v1 v2 s1 s2 these many variables were there basic variables are v1 v2 s1 s2 you have to take care of the order of the basic variable also, right? V1 is the first, V2 is second, like this. Cost of the basic variable V1 and V2 is minus 1, minus 1. That of S1, S2 is 0, 0, right? And what for XB? XBs are nothing but the right hand side constant. 2, 3, 4, 2. 2, 3, 4, 2. Let me write the columns corresponding to all the variables. Variables. X1 is 4, 0, 1, 1. X2 is 0, 0, 4, 2. Lambda 1 is 1, 4, 0, 0. One is, lambda 2 is 1, 1, 0, 0. Mu 1 is minus 1, 0, 0, 0. Mu 2 is V1 is 
first basic variable d2 is second this one is third this two is fourth now let me write the value of z here yes zv rather what is the value of zv Dxd, no? Minus six. Five? Yes, ma'am. Minus five. Let me write the CJ values as well. First, only V1, V2 takes minus one, minus one. And all the rest are. Zero. Okay, now it's just a time to calculate the net evaluations. As this net evaluation, so you can easily observe for x1, cv, x1 is minus 4, x2 it is 0. For lambda 1, this is minus 1, minus 4, this is minus 5. Lambda 2 is minus 2. Mu 1 is plus 1. Mu 2 is also. What is mu 2? Plus 1, no? Minus 1, 0. Minus 1 into minus 1, plus 1. What for our basic variables? Zero. Zero. Now here, if we observe the net evaluations corresponding to three variables are negative, where the most negative corresponds to lambda 1, but it's pair. What is a pair for lambda 1? In complementary slackness condition. Yes, 1. S1 is the pair, and S1 is already there in the basis. Right, no? Yes, ma'am. So lambda 1 net evaluation corresponding to lambda 1 is the most negative but its pair s1 is already there in the basis with a positive value what is the value the value of s1 is 4 therefore we cannot enter lambda 1 in the basis because if both of them becomes the basic variable then they take a non non zero value therefore the product will not be zero therefore just to ensure the complementary slackness condition that the product of lambda 1 s1 is zero one of them should be a non-basic variable. Now, as S1 is already in the basis, lambda 1 cannot become a basic variable. Therefore, we have to keep lambda 1 as non-basic itself. Therefore, we could not enter lambda 1. Right? What's the next option then? X1. Yes. Here I will write, since delta j corresponds to lambda 1, is most negative that is minus 5 but but s1 is already in the basis s1 is already in the basis correct now therefore may i say lambda 1 not enter the basis. Lambda 1 cannot enter the basis. If we will select the next negative value and which corresponds to x1. It is minus 4. Okay. Therefore, here let x1 enters the basis. Let x1 enters the basis yes if x1 enters the basis let us find out what is the outgoing variable how to find out the outgoing variable now this is entering variable xb upon x1 we have to find x1 value for the second variable it is zero therefore let us drop xb upon x1 for the first row two by four that is one by two here it is four here it is two therefore minimum corresponds to v1 Right now, is there any problem with this table? Four is my pivot now. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. If four is pivot, which row operations I have to use? R1 divided by four, R3 minus yes, R1 R1 divided by four, 
R3 minus R1 by 4 and R4 minus R1 by 4. Good. Okay. We have to perform these operations. Again, as the table will not be in front of me. To perform the operations, you should see the past table. But what I will do, again, let me write the table directly. You can do the calculations and tell me the entries as well. Do it with me and tell me the entries. Now here as V1 is the artificial variable leaving the basis, let me just to drop its entry. If I write directly V2, S1, S2. Cj entries, no doubt minus 1 for V1 only. Rest 0. Hmm. Now what are the basic variables? Instead of V1, we have X1, V2, S1, S2 already. Therefore, the cost vector becomes 0, minus 1, 0, 0. You just perform the row operations. Let me write the entries. Have you done it? Can you tell me the entries? Or you need some time? Uh, second row is no change. You can yes, the second row. For first row, we have to divide by 4. Have you completed the first two rows? Yes, ma'am. I don't know whether you are doing with me or... Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good. You can tell me the table entries. First, 1 by 2, 1. 0. One by four. One by four. One by four. One by four. Mu one. Mu one minus. Minus, one. minus one by four. Mu one is minus one, one by two. Four. Zero. Mu two zero. This is zero. Zero. Second row was as it is. Second row tell me as it is. Three. Zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. Four. One zero minus one one zero 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 zero. Third row, you calculate it. Okay, let me write it. You just check cross check afterwards. One by two zero four. Minus 1 by 4, minus 1 by 4, plus 1 by 4, 0, 0, 1, 0. Fourth row is 3 by 2, 0, 2, minus 1 by 4, minus 1 by 4, plus 1 by 4, equal 0, and Just cross check my entries. Now, what's the value of ZV at this stage? BXV. Hmm. Minus 3. This it is minus 3. Now let us go for native evaluations. Very easy native evaluations we have. As the vector CB is 0, minus 1, 0, 0. You have to take the just the negative entries of a second row. Right now? Negative entries of second row. 0, 0, minus 4, minus 1, 0, plus 1. Half for V2 as this is minus 1, this will be 0. And it is a basic variable as well. No? Correct? Again, let us check. The net evaluations, most negative net evaluation corresponds to again lambda 1 by 
but we have still less one is in the basis. Next net evaluation negative net evaluation corresponds to lambda two, but already S two is in the basis. Therefore, we cannot enter lambda one and lambda two. What is the choice we have to do? Anyhow, we have to improve the solution by entering Next. the basic variable. Yes, we will enter X two because it is my original variable. It is the original variable. What is the reason here? Lambda one, lambda two cannot enter the basis. S1, S2 are in the basis. Okay, or you can write lambda one S1 equal to zero, lambda two S2 equals to zero. Now, let us select the outgoing vector by calculating a minimum ratio. By calculating a minimum ratio, we have to consider x b upon x2. First two enters zero to drop because these are zero. Division by zero is not allowed. Seven by two upon four. Three by two upon four. Seven by two upon four is seven by eight. Three by eight. Hmm. This is minimum. As to will leave the basis. Therefore, which is the pivot? This is the pivot. Right? Which row operation should be used? R four by two. Yes. Hello. Yes. And R three minus. R three minus. Two R four. First two rows are as it is. Let us perform the operations. Till I write those variables, you just do all the row operations. CB basic variable CB XB X1 X2 lambda one lambda two mu one mu two mu two S1 S2 CJ entries are minus one here zero zero S two. Basic variables are x1, v2 as it is. Instead of s2, we have x2. Cost remains the same. If cost remains the same, it means there is no change in the value of z. Correct, na? First two rows as it is. Let us try it. But it's this first in this half. Half one zero one by four minus one by four zero zero. Even for new one, it is minus one. Plus one. Next second row is three zero zero four one zero minus one plus one zero zero. Third third row is zero one by two 
zero zero one by four minus one by four minus one by four zero zero one by minus two. So three is three by four zero one minus one by eight minus one by eight plus one by eight zero 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 and half. Check the entries, okay? Z is going to be remain same. Okay. Why is Z going to remain same? Because uh, whenever this net evaluation is negative, then only uh, entering the corresponding variable gives us the improvement in the solution or gives us the increment in the objective function. But here, we have entered the variable with zero net evaluation. Therefore, this variable is not going to increase the value of the objective function. Right? It just only ensures the next step. It helps us to ensure the uh, objective function in the next step. Now, let me write net evaluations again negative of the second row. 0, 0 minus 4, minus 1, 0, plus 1, for v to 0, s1, s2, again 0, 0. Same net evaluations will be there, right? Again, the most negative corresponds to, yes, most negative corresponds to lambda 1. Can we enter it? No, ma'am. Then which variable should I enter then? Lambda 2. Yes, lambda 2 we can enter because S2 is not there in the basis now. Therefore, now lambda 2 is the entering vector. Now, what one, what, what will be my outgoing one? How to calculate outgoing? X B upon lambda 2. But these two entries are... Just check that second and third row entries. Here it is showing S1 is going minus. to be in the basis. Huh? Lambda 2 entries check. These two are whether you are also getting negative. But in the book, it is showing S1 is going to leave the basis. But if S2 has to, uh, S1 has to leave the basis, minimum ratio should be negative for the corresponding. But as the entry itself is negative. For, uh, you have to check this lambda to entry. Check lambda to enter this entry. What is operation R3 minus 2 R3? Madam, it third entry is 1 by 4, plus 1 by 4. Plus, no? no. Ah. Check it again, okay? R3 minus 2 R4 you have to do. R3 is minus 1 by 4, minus 2. What is R4 minus 1 by 4? So this is plus 2 by 4 minus 1 by 4. Plus 2 by 4. Okay, correct. In the book, it is shown negative. I don't know. This is plus. Now one can find out the entry. Minimum positive ratio. Yes, XB upon lambda 2 now. This entry will be dropped only. 
ओरिजिनल वन करस्पॉन्ड्स टू एडेड स्लैग तो व्हाट वी विल डू वी विल रिमूव दिस एस वन इज इट क्लियर यस मैम तो बोथ द मिनिमम पॉजिटिव रेशियोस आर सेम फॉर एक्स वन एंड एस वन इंस्टेड ऑफ रिमूविंग द ओरिजिनल वेरिएबल वी विल रिमूव द एडेड वेरिएबल देयरफॉर व्हाट विल बी माय पीओट नाउ दिस वन विल बी अ पीओट आई फाइ राइट द पीओट Just do the row operations and get the next in table. This is third iteration, I think, na? No? So what length the example I have selected? Still, artificial is there available. And now we have to remove this artificial, which is at a positive level. Then only solution is going to exist, right? No. Now the basic variable becomes instead of S one we have lambda two. X one we have lambda two. X two. No changes in the cost vector again. What for X B? Let me write column wise: zero, one, two, one. X one, one, zero, zero, zero. X two, fourth variable. Lambda one is zero, three, one, zero. Lambda two is third basic variable. New one zero one minus one zero new two zero minus one zero zero. Please check the entries. Now Z V now becomes minus one, right? Solution improves from minus three to minus one. Next, the uh, net evaluations are negative of second row zero zero minus three zero minus one plus one zero plus four minus eight. Now the most negative corresponds to S two. And S two, whether lambda two is there in the basis? Yes, ma'am. Whether S two enters or not? No, ma'am. S two cannot enter. Next, lambda one, right? No. Yes, ma'am. Whether lambda one enters or not? Yes, ma'am. One enters the basis. S two could not be entered because its pair lambda two is there already in the basis. Now lambda one is the most negative after S two. Therefore, this will be my incoming. Now, how to I find out the minimum uh, outgoing vector? Minimum ratio. Now, first two entries we have to draw. X B upon lambda one. One by three and Yes, we got. Finally, this artificial is going out. Correct, na? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Now let us do the operations.
we do out that is the one is basic variable becomes now as which is basic variable x1 then lambda 1 no? x1 lambda 1 lambda 2 last is cost will be now xb column so which row operations should be used no change in first and fourth row second row should be divided by 3 third row r3 minus r2 by 3 you have to tell me both the row entries Something is missing in the textbook calculation. Tell me the entries now. First and fourth row, let us write as it is. First and fourth row. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. This is for V1, I think. V2, I think. For S1, this is minus 1, minus 2. Minus 1, plus 2. Fourth row also as it is. One, zero, one, zero, 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 one by two, minus one by two. What to do for second row? Let us let me write this uh, identity entries. X1 one zero 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 lambda one zero one zero zero lambda two zero zero one zero what for x two zero 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 one now let us just fill up the blanks for x b column r two by three users one by three this entry is one by three what for r three R3 minus 2 minus 1 third. 5 by 3. Minus 1 by 3 6. And for new 1, 1 by 3. What is this entry? Minus 1, minus 1 by 3. Minus 4 by 3? Yes, ma'am. For mu to check minus one by three and subtracted gives me plus one by three. Minus minus one by three plus one by three. For S1 minus four by three, second entry. And what for this entry now? R2 minus Oh, sorry, R3 minus R2 by 3. This 4 minus minus 4 by 3. Plus 4 plus 4 by 3. It's 2 by 3. Correct, no? Yes, ma'am. For S2 check, 8 by 3, second row. Minus 8, minus 8 by 3. Hmm. Minus 8, minus R3 minus 8, minus 8 by 3. Then you have 24, 24 and 8, 54, no? Sorry, 32, ma'am. Minus 32 by 3. By 3. Yes, ma'am. Now to check. Net evaluation should go negative, 0, not negative. Z is zero. Net evaluations are. May I say zero? 
because you have to solve it zero. We have why we have calculated those entries so carefully. <laughs> Whatever the entries are, right? Net evaluations are going to be zero, right? Now, so, but here what we have obtained? All net evaluations are non-negative, rather zero. Therefore, we have to stop the process. What is the solution then? X1 takes value 0, X2 takes 1, ZV 0. What for ZX? Optimum, optimum solution for QPP, shall I write directly? One can write for LPP and then for QPP also. Optimum solution for LPP you will write. Is ah, x10, x21, zv is 0. Thus, optimal solution for QPP is x10, x21. What? For Zx, what is your objective function? 2x1 plus 3x2 something. Here, let me write. This is 2x1 plus 3x2 minus 2x1 square. Let us just substitute the values. x1, 0, I have to substitute x2, 1. x2 means Zx is 3, no? Yes, ma'am. Hence the solution I Yes, any difficulty in the problem? Example. No, ma'am. How many tables? How many tables we have performed? One, two, five. Three, four, five tables. Is the method a difficult? You should tell me, please. Method is not difficult. Only it is somewhat lengthy and it involves more number of tables. But if you do careful calculation. There is no issue. Yes? If you have any difficulty in today's lecture, you can ask. In the next lecture, we will go for a next method of solving the quadratic programming problem called as Bill's method. Hardly two lectures we will require to complete good Bill's method. Then this third unit will be finished. Okay? If you have the difficulties, you can unmute yourself and ask. No difficulties? Shall I stop them? Thank you for being with me for today's lecture. Thank you.